We've been waiting to find out if criminal charges will be announced against the Trump organization or some member of its board, potentially the executive Alan Weisselberg. If not Donald Trump himself, it could be coming any day now, it could be coming this week. And the Trump org is launching some sort of last ditch effort to avoid that with the attorneys for the Trump organization meeting with prosecutors in New York earlier this week, just yesterday to argue that former President Donald Trump's company should not be criminally charged over its business dealings. The meeting lasted less than an hour over a video call, shorter than any video meeting I've had during the pandemic. It came after prosecutors warned that the Trump organization uh, that they were considering indicting the company and its long serving chief financial officer. So in just a minute, we're gonna get into what the potential charges are. And I would say that in general, I would describe them as far more limited than I was probably expecting, I guess. But, but we'll see, in, in advance though, we have to give Donald Trump a chance to respond to what's happening there. As my Skype feed is going crazy and you can see it reflected in the background, I don't know what that is. Anyway, here is what Donald Trump had to say. I don't think I'm gonna read this entire thing, it's a lot, but after hundreds of subpoenas, over 3 million pages of documents, four years of searching, dozens and dozens of interviews, and millions of dollars of taxpayer funds wasted, they continue to be in search of a crime and will do anything to frighten people into making up the stories or lies that they want, but they have been totally unable to get. They will do anything to stop the MAGA movement and me, even if it involves prosecutorial misconduct and harassment of a political opponent, which they are using at levels rarely seen before. They leak, they lie, and they campaign based on information that has already been gone through in other of the many investigations I have put up with. That was sort of a mess. But the idea there is that the prosecutors don't have anything. And if they do have anything, it is just based on lies that were told to them by executives that have been intimidated into lying. And so I think that that's designed to scare Weisselberg specifically because although we're not gonna go into all the details, there's concerns about perks that were provided to Weisselberg and other executives, um, private school tuition and stuff like that, that uh, might not have been logged correctly in company ledgers. And that that might not be so much about trying to get Weisselberg, but to flip him. Now, none of that says that what they're doing is actually wrong or that there's a lie or anything like that, Charles. But um, what do you think about this? It, it seems like they're worried. Do they have anything to worry about? This is actually more complicated than people would think. Um, at the end of the day, what we are watching with prosecutors and their sort of pressuring right now is exactly right. They are putting a lot of stock in Weisselberg and being able to flip him and they're hoping not only can they flip him, and, and at the end of it, and, and it's very important to understand that we're not talking about flipping him for the purposes of these cases, i.e., the the benefits that may have been uh, afforded to actual employees and trying to skirt the tax laws. This is not Al Capone. This is not how we're going to get Donald Trump. That's not what we're talking about. What they're actually hoping is that there is a bigger case afoot somewhere somehow. And that he's going to give them some inkling of information that is going to actually allow them to do something much bigger than what we're talking about right now. And I think the other side to it is, in fairness, putting on my hat as an attorney, for people to be criminally prosecuted for these sorts of things is relatively rare. It is somewhat mm -hmm. unusual because this is usually dealt with in the civil realm. So. Obviously, there are political motivations that are fueling how this is being approached. But what that says, and this is why I said this is more complicated, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be prosecuted on the criminal scale. I'm saying that it is unusual, and that's why it gets more complicated. For years, we have allowed sort of people who have been in that haves versus the have not section to get away with things that were illegal and deal with them in the civil realm. Now that we're in a situation where we actually wanna punish someone or use it in terms of actually making it criminal, you have the hurdle of being able to sort of mm -hmm. answer the question of, well, that's been the common practice over here. And when that's been the case, we've dealt with it in this way. Why are you trying to change the rules now? And I think that that is why it gets more complicated than people actually realize. And I think, you know, Cy Vance and Letitia James, they have to really think about 
some of the sort of rhetoric that they put out early on in the election because this is a big part of what it is that they sort of ran on. They were looking at uh, the public basically saying like, listen, we're gonna get him. We are mm-hmm. gonna get him. And I don't know if this is it, John. And, and to be honest with you, I don't think that it's it. I don't know if Weisselberg will flip. I don't know if he has anything that's super duper valuable enough that's going to actually connect Donald Trump to some criminal activity that's going to find him in handcuffs. Yeah. I think I think that Trump put a lot of space between himself and criminal dealings. And we have seen from Flynn to Roger Stone to uh, the list goes on and on. He has no problem throwing people under the bus. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not certain that this is going to be sort of like the thing that lands Trump in jail, which is why I said this is not the Al Capone taxes. That's how we got him. I don't think this is it. So, and and the thing is, like, what they're looking into Weisselberg for seems like very small. It's obvious. It's they're they're describing crimes, and crimes are illegal, and you should be punished. I, I grant that, but in in the 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 larger scale picture, it doesn't seem that big. What I think is much more interesting, and I think there's almost certainly there, and perhaps they need Weisselberg to really prove that this is happening, whether they can connect it to Donald Trump or not, has to do with the fraud. So. Uh, prosecutors have looked into whether the Trump organization lied about the value of real estate holdings to lower taxes or to obtain bank loans or insurance payments on favorable terms. Um, they're also looking into the hush money payments and all that. I consider that a separate thing. But um, the insurance fraud and the like, the fraud to get loans from banks that just that's been lingering there, out there, waiting to be looked into for literally years. And uh, it was described by. Um, I'm blanking on Cohen. So Cohen described this in his congressional testimony that this is something they would do. They would jack up the value of these properties to get loans. Then they would claim they were worth far less so that they wouldn't have to pay as much in taxes. There was talk of insurance fraud in response to supposed damage that was done to property from extreme weather events that didn't actually happen. And this is not Michael Cohen, yes. So this is not like very small amounts of money. So again, I don't know that they can prove that whether they need a Weisselberg for that or if they can connect it directly to Donald Trump. But I would be shocked if it wasn't happening at the very least, whether we ever really find out the details or not. I I think it probably is happening. I think it probably has happened. I mean, you know, I I take issue with the idea that these weather events didn't happen because climate. Um, But. (laughs) No, they have been. I just don't think they damaged the property to the right. extent they um, said it did. But here's the thing I think viewers have to really ask themselves. For those folks who have a bloodlust for Donald Trump and seeing him incarcerated or pay his penance for what he did to America, are you really going to be satisfied if his company is found to have been liable and or pays yeah. his fines. I mean, I think that in terms of common spaces of decency, he will forever and ever be a pariah unless he like saves the Pope from a burning building and, <laughs> and like, a bunch of children. Like he will forever and ever be persona non grata from hence, you know, henceforth. So there's that, right? But I almost feel like, and I'm not saying that these people should not be punished, nor am I saying that the Trump organization um, should not have to face penalties for wrongdoing of any sort. Um, what I'm saying is that we have to think, you know, is it really going to give us the satisfaction? And I hate to use that word, but I guess that's really the only thing I can think of by seeing all of that around him crumble. While he walks away free with very little consequence to his personal life. Like, people mm-hmm. wanna see him in jail. Like, they wanna see him in a jumpsuit, wearing like the, 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 the shackles and the, and the, and the handcuffs. They, that's what they wanna see. And this is just not gonna do it. And so I'm just kind of wondering. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if you voted for whether it's in Florida or New York, if you voted for an elected official and that was a significant reason why you voted for them and that doesn't happen, does it change how you feel when it comes to re-election time if they just get yeah. the corporation but not Donald Trump? I, I think that your read of what people want is is totally right on. I think there's a lot of people that want to see that. I 
I on some level would love to see it because I think that he has done un, unimaginable things. Um, I think a lot of presidents have probably merited that sort of treatment. I don't expect it at all though. Like I haven't invested any of my spirit in in even the inconvenient his company lost money stuff, let alone that he's gonna be like like doing bench presses in the yard. I have no expectation of that. Oh my god. We'll see. We'll see. Like he would be working out. That anyway. Oh, I paid money for that. <laughs> yeah. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.